Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. That we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life, and who now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, that the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 116, as found in your service leaflet. We will pray the psalm together. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I call upon him. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant. 
reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as oft as you drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now before the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and to go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share in me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was going to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am only with you a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, here we are at our Monday Thursday service, or as a young child I first heard, Monday Thursday. <laughs> Of course, Mondi relates to the word mandate, which comes from a Latin root, which means command. And that's Jesus saying, I give you a new command that you will love one another. And that's one piece of Mondi Thursday. Another, of course, is this institution, this beginning of the Lord's Supper of Communion of Eucharist. It's a moment that Paul recalls in his letter to the Corinthians that we heard from this evening, where he says, he was handed down that tradition of the Lord's Supper, where he recalls Jesus' words, 
This is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my blood. Do this as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. These words, this moment begins on that first Maundy Thursday before that Passover years ago in Jerusalem. But it feels like a little bit of a disconnect that we won't be receiving communion tonight on this Maundy Thursday. And that's true. But I think there's an opportunity too. You know, that context in which Paul recalls the Lord's Supper, in which he recalls that first communion with Jesus and the disciples at the Last Supper. It's a context where he wants those Corinthians to be prepared to receive that Holy Communion. See, all was not well in Corinth when it came to receiving communion. People would come, it was a house church situation, you would have a big meal, and communion would be a part of it. But what would happen at these communion services? The people who were really wealthy would bring all kinds of lavish meals and food. And the people who weren't wealthy would just bring a little bit of what they had. And it turns out they weren't sharing, this was not a potluck. So at the Lord's Supper of all places, you had people eating these wonderful banquets. And then you had other people just scratching to get by. And not only that, apparently people were getting drunk. Talk about not being prepared and worthy of receiving that body and blood of Christ. And so Paul brings this up. He recalls this moment where Jesus says, this is my body, this is my blood. This is given for you because he wants those Corinthians to really take to heart, to really take seriously what this communion is, the very presence of Christ who gave his life for you and to be prepared for that. And so I think there's an opportunity that we have while we are unable to receive communion together, and that is to recover that ancient Christian practice of preparing for Holy Communion. And it's something that some of our Roman Catholic and Eastern Orthodox brothers and sisters still do to this day. But it can be and is an Episcopal thing too. I kid you not. We turn here to the Catechism. It's on page 860 in the Book of Common Prayer for those who care to follow at home. At the top, there's a question. And it says, what is required of us when we come to the Eucharist? And you hear that question, you might think, what's required? Well, okay, I wait until the usher comes and tells me it's time to go, and then I put my hands like this, good, I'm ready. <coughs> Prayer book has a different answer. It says, it is required that we should examine our lives, repent of our sins, and be in love and charity with all people. That's what it says here in the prayer book about what's required of us when we receive the Holy Eucharist. And so we have time before we receive that body of blood of Christ again to really prepare for that moment. And we can do things like examine our lives. And I'm thinking about this time when so much has changed in our lives and yes, there's lots of things from before the pandemic that we want to get back to normal, where we say, yes, I can't wait to do that again when this is all over. But I suspect, too, if we take this time to examine our lives, there's going to be things where we're like, you know what? I think it's best to leave that aside. I think it's best when this is all over that I don't do that anymore, that I live in a new way. And if we examine our lives and preparing for that Holy Communion and live those sorts of lives out in the world and prove excuse me, improved lives, better lives, when this is all over and we can receive communion again, perhaps we don't go back to the old normal. Perhaps we move forward after this pandemic to a new normal, a better normal than the one we have before as we live as prepared people, people prepared to receive Holy Communion when we can do that again, and people prepared to live even better lives out in that world by finding those things that we need to get rid of, by finding those sins that we need to repent of, 
And then also this last piece about being in love and charity with other people. You can start that now and prepare to receive Holy Communion and prepare for that post-pandemic world by saying, yes, I'm going to love other people. Yes, there's compassionate distancing, but yes, we can reach out and continue to love people even in the here and now. And so now we're back to that new commandment, that new commandment that Jesus gives. I love one another as I have loved you. And you might say, well, new commandment. Love God with all your heart, soul, and strength. That had been on the books for generations, thousands of years. That's from Deuteronomy. Where's the newness? Or love your neighbor as yourself. That's from Leviticus. That's from the Torah too. That's been on the books for generations. Where's the new commandment part? It's the second piece. Where it says, as I have loved you. Looking to Jesus. How did he love? How can we embody that into those commandments to love God and love your neighbor? Well, we see it with that washing of the feet. And of course, with, in those days, we're not driving around in cars when we're traveling. We're not hopping on mass transit. People walked. Most of the roads weren't paved. They're walking on dirt roads. So if you came to somebody's house, your feet were dirtier than dirty. Somebody had to wash them. And usually it was the lowest ranking person in the household that needed to wash those feet. But here Jesus turns that on his head. He's the teacher. He's the master. They're the disciples. And he gets down and washes their feet and they're shocked. Jesus in his love and humility serves those disciples in love. And it's a very powerful thing. So powerful that Peter, he can't even take it. He's like, no. You can't wash my feet, oh God, how could you do that? Jesus, no, this is what I'm about. I'm not about power or status or lording it over you. I'm about service, I'm about love. I'm gonna wash your feet, and if you want to pardon me, you're gonna let me do that. And then, of course, Peter, he's all in. Yes, wash everything. What's amazing, though, is that it doesn't stop with just that turning it on the head. It doesn't stop with the humility and love of changing statuses and level. One thing I think that gets often forgotten in this passage is Judas hasn't left the room yet. Judas is one of those disciples who Jesus stoops down and watches, and knowing that Judas is going to betray him that Judas is going to send him to his death. And even in that, Jesus washes his feet and kneels before him in love and reaches out to him anyway. How expansive, how amazing, how boundless a love is that. Jesus reaching out to the one who will betray him and then heading to that cross and giving of his body and his blood to save us. Now we get a sense of what's new in that commandment. Love one another as I love you. That means holding nothing back. Loving with all our heart, all our abandon. Holding nothing behind. That's what Jesus did for us. That's what Jesus did for Judas on that night and all his disciples. He loves us so much. And even when we sin, even when we fall short, even when we turn away, Jesus is still there looking to serve us, to love us, to inspire us to love, and to pick us up. So tonight we remember Jesus and his endless, boundless love that saves us. We remember to prepare for that day when we can receive Holy Communion again and be ready to make a new and better world and to love each other out in our world and love each other here in our church as Christ loved us. Amen.
prayers of the people this evening are form two is found on page five of your worship bulletin. I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world. In the Anglican cycle of prayer this week, we pray for the Anglican Church in Nigeria. We pray for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, for Eugene, our bishop, for Robert, our assisting bishop, for Matthew, Nathan, and John, our clergy, and, the, in the, and those in our diocesan cycle of prayer, the Slate Project Baltimore, St. Bartholomew's Baltimore, St. David's Roland Park, for this gathering, and for all ministers and people, pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill among nations, and for the well-being of all people. We pray for Donald, our president, the Congress and Supreme Court of the United States, for Larry, our governor, Stuart, our county executive, pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. In our parish family this week, we pray for Bill, Ward, Carol, Kevin, Rob, Kelly, Carter, Jenny, Neil, Nadine, Lynn, Christopher, Mark, Jocelyn, Andrew, Bill, John, Cole, Elizabeth, Catherine, and Annie. Pray for those in any need or trouble. Pray for all those whose lives have been affected by the COVID-19 virus and all health care providers as they tend to those who have been infected. For those who are recovering from addiction and do not have access to recovery meetings, for those affected by natural disasters who live in fear or whose lives have been affected by gun violence and acts of terror, both domestically and abroad. For those serving in our armed forces and for all our children and grandchildren. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by God. I ask your prayers for the departed. Pray for those who have died. Praise God for those in every generation whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have grace to glorify Christ in our own day. Heavenly Father, you have promised to hear what we ask in the name of your Son. Accept and fulfill our petitions, we pray, not as we ask in our ignorance, nor as we deserve in our sinfulness, but as you know and love us. In your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. My sisters and brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace, 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 peace. I have one quick um, announcement for us tonight um, as we move forward with our service. Uh, for the stripping of the altar, uh, a late uh, minute add to your uh, to your scoring sheet, if you will. Um, we sent out an email earlier today about uh, adding the overnight vigil. Thanks to uh, Sarah Parkinson for helping to do that. If you uh, take a look and see the email that got sent today with the service bulletin, it's that very same email. You'll find ways to link to all the instructions on how to do it, as well as a sign up. So I encourage you to uh, spend an hour with Christ tonight in the garden to, uh, to pray and to watch as, uh, as we uh, celebrate from Maundy Thursday into Good Friday.